If I was a beginner and I was just starting to work on making my website ADA compliant, here is what I would do. I would first gather information. And I know that sounds boring. That doesn't really sound proactive, but it's very important. And this will save you a lot of money, time, and energy. I've consulted with so many clients who have moved really fast in exactly the wrong direction, and they've had to start all over again, and they've wasted so much money. So you don't want to move fast in the wrong direction. You want to move fast in the right direction. And the only way to ensure that you're moving in the right direction is just to take the time to gather information and to better understand what goes in to making your website accessible. So given that, let's start off with a really good path, which is to first identify five primary pages on your website. This will include your homepage and then four other pages that users typically go through. So let's say you're an e-commerce website. This would include your shopping cart. This would include your product page, etc. Now, now that we have five pages that we're going to focus in on, let's run a wave scan on each of those pages. Now, I say wave scan because it is very beginner friendly, it's intuitive, and it will help educate you on accessibility as you go through the accessibility, as you go through the results for your different pages. So let's say we've run our, our homepage, we see, uh, we see errors, we see alerts, you want to look at both of those and look at all of the issues that reside on your website. So WAVE is going to educate you and it's going to be practical in its application because we are instantly going to know accessibility issues that reside on our website. But WAVE, just like any other scan, is limited in, into, in, as far as what can be caught or flagged by automation. So just know that scans are limited. So when we think of the technical standards, you've probably heard of WCAG or the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. These are the technical standards. Just remember that scans only flag a subset of issues, a very small subset at that. So just think, think of 25% of those WCAG 2.1 AA issues are going to be able to be flagged by automation, but it's not even necessarily reliably flagged. Sometimes the flags are um, off. Sometimes we have false negatives, etc. So just remember that you know, WAVE is only going to approximately flag 25% of accessibility issues, but all scans are, are around that number. So even if they're a premium scan, it's not going to flag any more issues than what the free scans do. So just keep that in mind, but WAVE is very helpful because we will be able to identify issues and then we can educate ourselves on accessibility as we go through those issues. This is something you can do right now. I will include a link to WAVE in the description, but I highly recommend it because it is beginner friendly and it's a great way to start. And then now let's continue the education by going through the web content accessibility guidelines. And we don't have to spend hours, but we do need to familiarize ourselves with these different success criteria. So I have a WCAG checklist and I have a WCAG guide. The checklist is going to give you the surface level requirement. The guide is going to get into a fully, fuller explanation where we talk about exceptions, where we talk about the different layers of the success criteria. And so that's going to be the guide. And then the checklist is just going to be a quick rundown. If nothing else, just go through the quick rundown and spend a few minutes, if you do, you'll have better context and you'll have a better understanding for accessibility. Um, now, going back to scans for a second, just note that with scans, um, it doesn't matter if we have a full website scan or not because we can't take action on all of those results. So even if a scan tells you, look, you can scan your entire website, fine, but practically what can you do with all of those results? Because you can only work on so many accessibility issues at once. So there's really no value there. When you think of maintenance and monitoring, again, it really, if you think about, if you think about this in its practical application, there's really not too much benefit because why are we monitoring um, to see if any accessibility issues come in after the fact? We should be monitoring beforehand. And if there are any, if we're making a, let's say a redesign, 
we need to have accessibility implemented into the redesign. We want to get out of the reactive state and more into the proactive state where we are integrating accessibility into our processes. So I've talked about this more in other videos, but just know you likely, most website owners are not going to derive value from a, a paid scan. So just keep that in mind. So I will, I will link to the WCAG checklist. I will link to the WCAG guide. Both of those are free. You don't have to enter your email. Um, and those are, those are, um, both of those documents are created by me. Now, if you want to take this further, you can also gain some experience by um, downloading a screen reader. Um, if you are using Windows, you will download NVDA. If you're on Mac, you will have a you have VoiceOver screen reader pre-installed, and both of those are available for free. Um, and just by using a, a screen reader, gaining experience, testing your website with that screen reader, it's going to help you understand accessibility better. Again, this is optional but it is recommended. It is something that will really help further your accessibility knowledge. Same with keyboard testing. So with keyboard testing, um, just don't use your mouse. You can unplug it. Use only your keyboard and test your website. Is it fully functional? Is it fully navigable using only a keyboard? So test to make sure that you don't ever get trapped using a keyboard. If you, if you have to reach for a mouse, if you have to use a mouse to use your website, then you need to, you have an accessibility issue there. So you want to make sure that the pop-ups don't create a keyboard trap. You want to make sure that you can navigate to all of the interactive elements. You want to be able to use all of the different functionality on your website. Um, so keyboard testing can be very helpful as well, but those are two optional things. Um, even running through this list, it may just, even if you just spend an hour, it's really going to help accelerate your understanding of accessibility and it's going to help you make better decisions. So when I take when I talk about making better decisions, now if you do decide to make a purchase, um, you will have a more informed purchase, and you won't be just relying on the people who are selling you the products to educate you. Because if you are, they are going to try to sell you on something you likely do not need. So you don't need a widget, you don't need a toolbar, you don't need any plugins, you don't need any instant fixes any type of software, et cetera. What you have to remember is that accessibility is largely a manual exercise. Yes, there are tools that um, through automation can help with that, but the best tools are available for free. And even when we talk about plugins on the whiteboard with me, I have an asterisk. And the reason why is because one genuine plugin um, creator is Joe, Joe Dolson, and he is a technical ex accessibility expert and his plugins are legitimate. So just keep that in mind. Joe, Joe Dolson is one exception here, but otherwise you shouldn't have to pay for any subscriptions. They're going to be light benefit, if anything. Um, if, you, if you do want to make a purchase, just like I said, spend more time on the information side and understanding accessibility better rather than trying to purchase a product and um, product like uh, getting this product as a way to um, get out of accessibility there is no way to buy a product and then bypass accessibility it doesn't work like that many people think or they ask what are the best products for accessibility what tools do i need to make my website ada compliant well the best tools are free the best tool are tools are scans wave is a, is a great scan beginner friendly and then axe is another great scan and it's more geared toward developers um, but no subscriptions no instant fixes, nothing like that. It's not, that's not helpful. That's not a good use of your money. Now, if you do want accessibility services, remember an audit is going to, it's going to identify all of the accessibility issues within the scope of your audit. So let's say there are 15 pages in the scope of the audit. Um, in theory, optimally, an audit will identify um, and discuss really get into detail on all of the accessibility issues that reside on your website within that scope but an audit isn't enough you also have to take action on an audit so if you don't have the developer uh if you don't have the development skill set and experience to take action on an audit you need remediation remediation is where we're, we are going to fix the different accessibility issues on a website um, so there is the technical side of remediation, so the code remediation, and then the non-technical side of remediation, which is the content remediation. So just keep that in mind. We are going to be fixing our, our website, but we also need to fix our content. So there are those two things. 
we must fundamentally fix them to make those different aspects accessible, to, to make your code accessible, to make your content accessible. We need to fundamentally fix it. We can't use a widget for that. The, a, at best, a widget re renders superficial adjustments. So just keep that in mind. We have to fundamentally fix our code and our content. So that is where I would start. Start by going through these different steps and you will start to have a much better understanding of accessibility. And as you do so, I think you'll start to see why the instant fixes, why the premium scans, the maintenance and the monitoring don't necessarily return value. If they do return value for you, great. Most people though do not need those things. Um, so with adacompliance.net, I offer training. Um, the flagship course is the ADA compliance course. Is this, this is going to help you know all of the, the, the top 15 accessibility issues that are claimed in litigation and how to find those issues and how to fix those issues. So I go through that course step-by-step step in very, very technical detail with code examples. I also have the WCAG course on adacompliance.net. And so this is really going to take the checklist and the guide to the next level because it's going to include video explanations of every single last success criterion. Um, so that is also very helpful as well because for website accessibility, as you are building out SOPs, as you are making this a part of your processes, you do need to have a really good understanding of the web content accessibility guidelines. And this is not only for you, um, the developer, the designer, the content manager, but even the website owner, you should know about generally about accessibility so that you are aware if there are any issues. It's not that necessarily you're going to be fixing those, but as a website owner, you're ultimately responsible for the web for the accessibility of your website. So just keep that in mind. And then at accessible.org, if you are looking for done for you services to really circumvent this whole process, then we, we offer audit and remediation, both code and content remediation at accessible.org. Uh, 